Finance, we're introducing yet another team member at Equity.Guru because what we do on First Glance is sort of open up the investment world and community to people who maybe haven't dipped their toe in or others who are tired of the noisy machine of disinformation and the team at Equity.Guru are cutting to it, cutting to the goods. And one of the key members is our next guest, Vishal Tura is with us, our technical guy, our technical analyst. Thanks for doing this, Vishal. Thank you. Great to be here. So if you're listening on the podcast, you are missing out because Vishal is sitting in what we reference as what? Your gold vault. My gold vault. I'm also a big fan of silver as well. So I got to sprinkle some silver bars in there as well. But I think uh, some of our viewers know uh, how much I love the precious metal. So. Well, tell us your love of that, because for those who are just meeting you for the very first time, take us through what technical analysis and being a technical analyst is about and and why you love gold and silver so much. Right. Yeah. So uh, let's start with like technical analysis. So um, technical analysis is essentially a school of thought where an investor or a trader uh, uses charts or technical indicators or fancy, you know, mathematical equations, those things that you see on charts to basically, um, you know, identify investing or trading opportunities as opposed to fundamental analysis, which is looking at, you know, economic data, right? How are economies doing? What's the GDP print? You know, is OPEC going to put a limit on oil? So essentially a technical analyst will look at charts and will actually zoom out and look at previous levels of, um, you know, I don't want to use too much jargon right now, but basically price floor and price resistance, you know, looking at these areas where price has reacted in the past and use those areas to forecast possible price uh, predictions for the future. So it's a different approach, just looking at charts, not necessarily looking at fundamentals, although there are you know, a lot of people who do combine both technicals and fundamentals, but in this field, there are a lot of people who are just technicals and will you know, say that that's what only matters, whereas there's other people who say, no, you, know, you have to be a fundamental guy. But I like to sort of blend uh, both together. And I think uh, it's great if you're an investor or a trader and you should incorporate some sort of technical analysis in your outlook. I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to reiterate kind of, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm going to put it in the ultimate layperson's term, because that's who I am. I really, I'm a Luddite when it comes to the trends and the analysis, but right. from what you just explained to me, you're kind of like the meteorologist who's going to look at scientifically, what are we looking at here, what the trends are, year over year, winter is colder than summer, right? Just as generalization. But then you're also going to look at the ISO bars. You're going to look at the, okay, now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to look at what weather might be coming in here, what just went by. So you're going to put all of your knowledge together and tell us what we might expect this afternoon. Exactly. And just sort of like, you know, I guess meteorology, it's, it's all about probabilities. It's a business of probability. So I might not be 100% correct, But, you know, if I'm at least in my analysis, if I'm 60 to 70 percent, that's good enough for me as a technical analyst. And that's a trade that I would take. So a whole business of probabilities using all these confluences to help build my case. I love this. So you're the chart man. He is the (laughs) chart man. We got to get you like a Batman costume with like a chart on your chest or something fun. How do you get started in chart reading and interpreting? How do you do that? Like, is it just the way your mind works? Well, so th- there is a, you know, there is um, tons of books and all these, you can actually do courses now as a certified technical analyst, but um, you have cool. to sort of learn about charting. So there's something called candlestick charts. I'm sure, you know, if you've seen any Wall Street movie or uh, went to any financial website, you know, you'll see those like red and green body things yep. on charts. Those are candlesticks. It was actually invented by uh, a rice farmer in Japan, actually a couple of hundred years ago, who was trading the rice markets and apparently never lost a trade. So that was actually brought from Japan over to North America by an author named uh, Steve Neeson. And he has a book called Japanese Candlesticks. And that's sort of seen as like the Bible of uh, technical analysis or the Bible of candlesticks. But I think, you know, learning that is a, a good way to just kick off and uh, we do have some beginner videos on equity guru about candlesticks so you know check those out um if you're if you're watching this if you're watching this as opposed to listening to it we're rolling some of that viz right here so this is this is what those charts uh look like 
that Vishal is, is referencing here. And if you're if you're listening on the podcast, go to equity.guru and, and as mentioned, you, you, you can find them there. Uh, continue what you were saying. And then from there, you know, there's a lot of jargon. Like I said, there's things called support and resistance. Uh, funny enough, you know, a lot of financial guys, we like to overcomplicate things because sometimes it makes us feel special. <laughs> but, you know, support and resistance, all it is is a fancy way of seeing, saying a price floor and a price ceiling. Uh, but there's those type of terms that you'll have to learn. And I think if you stick with simple candlesticks, uh, simple support and resistance, then just drawing trend lines, which, you know, might look intimidating at first, but it's essentially just connecting the dots. Sometimes right. that's all it really is, right? It's just connecting the dots. You have a trend. You buy when the trend is up. You sell when the trend is downward. But I think that's a good start. And I would also say, try to keep it simple. You know, I, I like mm. to use that, uh, that KISS philosophy, uh, keep it simple, stupid. Just because yeah. when you have so much indicators out there, uh, it can, you know, you overcomplicate things even for yourself. Um, and you get messy really fast. I want to ask you specifically about that, if you don't mind, because I get asked a lot being a part of equity.guru. And I always tell people, I, I'm no expert. I just talk to experts, which I love. So I get to bend your ear. So when somebody says to me, like, how do I even invest these days? It feels like one day it's up and one day it's crashing and it's inflation. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a bear market, right? Like, right. how do we, how do we do, how do we do this? How do you, how do you not panic? <laughs> Right, right. So I think first, you know, you want to put yourself in a category. Do you want to be someone who is a trader who wants to maybe profit off of the downwards move? Or do you want to be someone who is, and I guess most people will be this, but an investor, right? That's looking yeah. for the long, long term. Exactly. So, uh, you know, in, in technical analysis, we have sort of ways to try to determine when a bottom is going to come in. Um, but generally, you know, we're not people who like to buy when things are going down because it's akin to maybe throwing a knife up in the air and trying to catch the knife, right? You, you sort of want- Without cutting to, yourself, yeah. You want things to sort of settle down. So there are certain technical indicators which, you know, I would look for and, you know, I do write about when I see them on Equity Guru. Uh, yeah. But, and some people might hate me for saying this, but, you know, cash is always a position, right? It's a safe position, just waiting for things to calm down a little bit, wait for all that noise to- to disappear. Um, right now, the markets are all uh, worried about, you know, inflation and interest rates. And then there's all these geopolitical things uh, going around the world. So if we are in a true bear market, uh, there is going to be maybe further, you know, to go down. However, if you're a long-term investor, I would, and this is what I would personally do, is consider things that are essential, right? Like, if right. the economy is bad, if you're in a bear market, people are always going to be going to the supermarket for food. Um, a lot of these supermarkets, you know, they pay dividends as well, right? So uh, the stock might be moving down, but they pay that quarterly dividend for you. And it's sort of like the Warren Buffett way of investing, where you look for good businesses uh, that will thrive and survive and pay dividends. And the other thing, you know, is utility stocks or what people call as, you know, energy and power, your hydroelectricity. Uh, you know, we're here in BC, we're always going to be paying our Fortis BC bills and Fortis is traded. So they'll always be making money. And I think those are usually like a safe haven stock uh, during recessions or down markets because it's things that people will always have to use. Uh, so you might want to consider looking at those essential businesses that where people will always be spending money month by month, uh, even if the markets and the economy as itself is going down. That's a really great um, mindful you know, sit yourself down and ask yourself, is now the time that you want to take the risk? Because some would say, well, it's down, it's down. This right. is what I should be buying. It's going to go. But if it hasn't reached its bottom yet, you just, so I'm a very, uh, personally in my portfolio, my level of risk is very moderate, okay. right? Like I'm just, I'm slow and steady. What you just explained about look at look at where the essential services are, look at what's needed, maybe a little bit of trend in here and in sure. there. And if I feel passionate about something that's perhaps it's, a, it's an environmental trend or I like the, you know, the the uh, plant based food, whatever it might be. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to take a little bit of my money and put it over there, but always something that I'm willing to lose. Right. So I'm that person. And I see others that are like, shell game of I'm moving it around, moving around. So it really does depend also on the your level of tolerance, right? Right. Yeah, your risk profile. And, and like, you know, what you mentioned there, I'm assuming you're probably an ETF uh, investor where, you know, you just buy the ETF of the S&P 500, which again is a great example because 
if you actually zoom out on the charts to, you know, say the 20s or the 30s, uh, in the long run, the stock markets have always gone up, right? There are blimps where we have like a, you know, the Great Depression, the, the Great Financial 2008. Collapse. Yeah. yeah, 2008. But yeah. the overall trend is always upward. So that's also another thing, you know, if, if you are um, investing, I tend to like something called dollar cost averaging. So maybe every month I will put in a few hundred dollars in an ETF that tracks the market. So whether the markets are down or up, you know, I'm slowly building that position. And then a couple of years from now, uh, hopefully I get to retire with that, right? So I like that. I like it. No, yeah. that's a good one. That's a good one. So do you have an example of one of a uh, chart that you love at the moment? Uh, okay, yeah. I, I think the uranium stuff um, is really interesting right now. Um, energy, so looking at natural gas and oil and um, Unfortunately, maybe, you know, it's predicting what might come to Europe, you know, this winter, mm. with their energy situation there. Um, yeah. But I would say the charts that I look at the most right now, um, maybe, they're not maybe necessarily my favorite, but I think they're the most important for someone who wants to be a, a trader or a technical analyst is uh, the chart of the U.S. dollar and mm. also the chart of the 10-year U.S. yield. Uh, it's just, it's the bond yields in the United States. Uh, yeah. The reason I say that is the, the bond yields, it'll sort of indicate or tell you where interest rates are going. So if interest rates are going to be heading higher, if the market thinks that the Federal Reserve and central banks are going to increase rates even more, uh, historically, the markets you know, don't really like that. And um, it could give you an indicator of where the equity markets or the stock markets are going to go uh, if, if the rates keep rising higher and higher. And then that US dollar, it's just it's that reserve currency. So when there is that fear in the world as well, a lot of money, you know, runs to the US dollar. And I mean, I'm not sure if you know, but the Japanese yen has taken a huge hit. The Euro has taken huge. A huge hit. Yep. Yeah. Euro yep. as well, the British pound. So I think that's something to keep in mind. You know, when you see the dollar getting that strong, um, is it only because of interest rates or is it more because of this overall sort of fear around the world? So I think those two charts are quite important. Yeah, and especially yeah. the dollar looks like it's going to head higher, which again, sort of sucks for my uh, gold investment here behind me. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll be keeping an eye on those trend lines and watching you uh, connect the dots uh, for sure. So ultimately, when, when you're reading charts and, and we're relying on the behavior of other investors, um, what do you always keep in the back of your mind? Because clearly there's more than... More, more, more charts out there than one can possibly consume. That, that especially the layperson or somebody who's just trying to, to, to get into it. Do you have a piece of sort of advice that you keep in the back of your mind when doing what you do? Uh, well, like I said, you know, keep uh, keep it simple in terms of your indicators. Don't get it too messy because you know you don't want to yeah. look at really messy charts. And you've probably seen some of my charts on Equity Guru. Some people might say they're a bit messy, but I think they're quite simple compared to what you can see out there. Um, and I think. You know, as an approach, as you mentioned, tons of thousands of stocks out there, right? So I think it's good to sort of narrow it down to what type of trader or investor you want to be. Um, as a trader, I sort of focus a lot on the markets as a whole. So I'll look at the S&P as a whole, the NASDAQ as a whole. I won't really look at, say, Apple and Microsoft. You know, I won't have that type of list. But that's another way people can go is I, I know a lot of my friends who are traders like to focus just on one sector. So right. they'll just maybe have a list for all the tech stocks or maybe the, the higher um, market cap stocks and then go from there. Uh, there's, there's a million ways to make a million dollars in trading. There's so many ways to approach this. So yeah. I think, you know, find something that sort of suits your personality as well. Um, you know, if you're someone who's a bit more calm and wants to be away from the computer, you know, maybe look at. Uh, longer term time frame charts. Whereas if, if you don't mind being glued in front of a computer, yeah, being this guy or gal, yeah, 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 during your yeah. five minute, you know, your your trades every one minute or whatnot, then right. that's more of a day trading approach where yeah. you might just want to look at the overall stock market because that's generally what is traded by day traders the most. Like, uh, I know people who just sit there every day of the year just watching the S and P 500. That's the only thing they'll watch, and they just play that all day. So. Yeah. Michelle, it's been fascinating to chat with you. If somebody wants to obviously check out your charts, they can do so at equity.guru. Is there a place that people can reach out and connect with you if they were looking to do so? Uh, yeah. I mean, you can uh, contact me again through the website, but I also do have a Twitter. 
Um, it is uh, at Uncharted FX. So it's, I'm up there as well. But you'll see me, you know, uh, Equity Guru always retweets my stuff. So. Awesome. Well, when we put this up on Twitter, sure. uh, obviously I follow you. And, and then we'll make sure we retweet it so uh, people can share it with their friends. You can also go to equity.guru and share First Dance with Jody Vance as well. Always fun to hang out and learn from you. I really did learn something today. And I feel a little bit better about what I'm already doing. I'm, already, I'm following your advice is what I'm doing. Awesome. Yep. The dollar cost averaging. I think that's a smart way to do it. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. Michelle says so. Thanks so much, buddy. Thanks, Jody. Thank you.